after cartoon characters have been called muscle cars, but the one that comes to mind, the first and in many ways the best of all the muscle cars, and I'm talking about this Plymouth Roadrunner. This is a car that started out as a poor man's muscle machine, and it ended up with the most powerful engine ever to come out of Detroit. behind the Roadrunner was a simple, light, fast car with its stripped taxi cab interior and its $2,900 price tag in 1968. This car was an unbeatable value, but with a 446 pack, the sway bars, and the fat tires, this was also a killer machine that anybody could afford. Then in 1970 came the wing. The special arrow package was developed by Lockheed in its wind tunnel, and the car was dubbed the Plymouth Roadrunner Superbird. The Superbird Saga is one of the great stories of racing. Combining the hottest engine of the day with a daring aerodynamic wing, it produced an unbeatable car. It was so ahead of its time in aerodynamics that it set a record at Bonneville that still stands today. The awesome 426 Hemi took the first seven places at Daytona in 1964. The winged Hemis were an unbeatable combination till the wing was banned and the Hemi gave up to the pollution control devices. Roland Osborne, founder of Chrysler Power Magazine, is dedicated to keeping these great cars alive and well. Roland, tell me about the Superbird. Well, the Superbird was a package that was developed by Chrysler at the Lockheed, Lockheed uh, Georgia wind tunnel. And it was in order to pick up extra about five to seven mile an hour on the high-speed ovals, which it did very effectively. Very, very quickly, too. It won the Daytona 500, its first outing with Pete Hamilton. I was there. Well, that's a fact. It was a <laughs> very, very fast package. Why was the wing band at NASCAR? Well, it won so decisively. The Daytona and the Superbird both were much, much faster. I'd say three to five mile an hour faster on the high-speed ovals. The Fords and Chevrolets couldn't catch them. So the sanctioning bodies decided to restrict them, and ultimately they not only restricted them, they just said, no, you can't run. It's not fair. What about the Hemi? Why was the Hemi banned? Well, approximately the same reason as the wing cars. If you remember back in 64 when the Hemi first came out at Daytona, it took one through seven places. Sure did. They restricted it over the years. They put smaller carburetor restrictions in it just trying to stop it. It was still, again, <laughs> Chevrolet and Ford couldn't catch them. And so with another, you know, we'll go back to the politics too. When you're, when you're losing, you scream louder than when you're winning. The life of all these great cars were just too short. Like most of the classic muscle cars, the Roadrunner here was castrated after 1970. Pollution controlled equipment and safety-minded bureaucrats resulted in more and more watered-down cars until only the memories were left. But memories like this live on. And in cars like this, let's ride.